here she comes. Oh, oh, oh. That was a great bath, I tell oh, you. Right. Huh? Oh. Tell you what, that gravelly stuff you got was uh, great for exfoliating the skin. Oh, I'm all invigorated. Yes, scutter and gobsheen. That's Pox's cat litter. Huh? It needed changing. Oh, Jesus. I thought it was some sort of sand and seaweed concoction. <laughs> uh, Podge, if you don't mind me saying that, uh, when's the last time you had a bath? <laughs> Baths are for ponces and lady men. They're just an excuse for playing with yourself. Oh, they are? Yeah. All that warm water slushing around your gels. A bar of imperial leather between your cheeks. Oh, I must clean down there. Yep. Pervo. Then you get out and buff yourself down with a towel, puff yourself up with talc, and the next thing you know, you're giving yourself a pubic trim. Oh, I'm going back in. Oh, Stop oh, right there, oh. Rodrigo Leprosy. Oh. Or that bath might become your coffin. Huh? What are you scuttering on about? Let me tell you the tale of Endemy Shank. A medical student from Big Arse Ladies, Lima, Peru. He came to study in Dublin. It was his final year in genetic science, and by all accounts, he was a bit of a genius. The trouble was, his uh, classes were beginning to bore him. The rest of his class were too slow for Ender, so he decided to do some extra experiments of his own back at his flat. <laughs> Come here. Did he experiment on his own genetics, or did he uh, experiment with some ladies? <laughs> um, uh, genetics is the study of the very fabric of nature, not your fiddly bits. <clears throat> huh. Did he? Uh, did he do the old human ear on a mouse one? <laughs> that was old hat to end. Sure, he'd grown a nose on an owl, a foot on a dog, and his best ever was. A lad on a lettuce. Now that's progress. But, eh, uh, hardly ethical, Podge. Ethics me arse, Rog. In Ender's eyes, he was the new creator. Ender reckoned within five years he could grow a whole human body from scratch. Jesus. Did he ever show anyone his lettuce, lad? God, no. You'd be locked up for abusing the strict genetic codes of conduct. Mm -hmm. In fact, Ender was very careful to dispose of any evidence. Then one day, his meddling ways caught up on him. He was sitting on the bog reading New Scientist when he heard a scraping. Bloody rats! I must call the landlady, he shouted. He followed the scraping across the bath and looked down the plug hole. And what he saw shot the life out of him. It was a large eye. From his experiments? Yep. Problem was, it winked at him. Jesus. There was something very alive in Ender's pipes. And then it spoke. Spoke? Yep. Hello, Ender. I've been listening to you for months now. I thought it was time you met your creation. Ender was stunned as a bony digit crept through the plug hole. Ooh. Over the next few weeks, Ender engaged the company of the pipe creature. Oddly enough, they supported the same football team. Everything was fine up until Ender met the girl of his dreams. But how would he explain the abomination in the bath? Ender had a plan. That very evening, he told the creature that there was a good film on the TV at 8 o'clock. I'll be here, said the creature. Anyway, as the film began and the eye was looking out the plug hole, Ender emptied a full bottle of sulfuric acid on top of the eye. Ah! It said. The ruthless bastard. Why did he do that? I thought they were getting on great. Well, the bathroom was a bit tight for three to shave. Three? Yeah. Ender's new girlfriend was moving in that very evening. And he couldn't have an abomination living in the pipes with a young lady in various states of undress. Oh, oh. <laughs> I suppose not. Oh. <laughs> As he was setting the table for a romantic meal to welcome his girlfriend to her new home, <laughs> he heard an almighty crash coming from the bathroom. <laughs> I thought I'd kill that foul fiend, he shouted as he ran into the bathroom with more acid. 
only to be confronted with a massive hole where the plug hole used to be. Oh, oh. Jesus. Then, Ender felt the cold steel of a three-foot shower rail through his heart. Then there was a ring at the doorbell. It was Ender's girlfriend with her suitcases by her side. Please do come in, Mary, said a voice as she entered the darkened hallway. Why are all the lights out, Ender? said the girl. It's your moving in surprise, baby. <laughs> and she screamed as a hideously deformed Ender lunged at her. Oh. But wait, wasn't Ender in the bathroom with a pole through his chest? Oh, he was. <laughs> What she saw was the creature from the pipes that just happened to be a genetically mutated Ender, made up from the soup of his experimental concoctions and the DNA from the cells of skin that he had shed during three years of baths. Unknown to Ender, he had advanced genetic engineering forward a decade, but that didn't matter as he lay skewered to his girlfriend on the bathroom floor. But, uh, what about the monster? Ah, they never found it. But it makes you wonder when the pipes start creaking. <laughs> I tell you what, I don't want some lad stuck in my waste pipe. I think you might want to rephrase that, Rog. Huh? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, 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 oh.